2017 Ford Focus S. The end of the line for Ford's compact car, and on the surface, seemingly another victim of the sedan apocalypse. But underneath the hood is, uh, something else that we need to talk about about this car. All righty now. I've covered the Fusion. I've covered the Fiesta. Now, I'm here to talk about the death of the Focus and Ford's compact offering in the United States. Which is a shame, because the third generation Focus was a bit of a renaissance for the brand in the early 2010s. The first generation Focus was a fantastic small car that gave Ford probably its best chance against the Japanese brands ever. Now, Ford proceeded to muck it up by splitting off the European and American focuses for the second generation and giving the Americans something akin to a chromed up Mark I focus while Europe got something much more modern for the time. But here, here, Ford hit on something that the original focus had set out to do. Give Americans a small American car that they could probably buy over a Japanese import. But despite all of the success it would bring, a change in market and the ever-loving search for profit margins meant that the small car would not live past this generation in the United States. And there's also another reason that we'll get to in a little bit. But, once again, the fact that Ford killed off its cars is a shame. Here, you had one of Ford's cheapest offerings, an entry-level compact car aimed specifically at young people looking to get their first new car, gone. It was a calculated risk that Focus buyers would simply slide over to an Echo Sport or an Escape. However, most did not, and Focus buyers often slid over to Hyundai, Kia, Honda, and Toyota's compact offerings. Oh. Yeah, Ford. Most small car buyers want a small car, not an SUV. Yeah, there's plenty of buyers for the Echo Sport and Escape, but Ford was calculating that brand loyalty in the small car buyers would simply transfer over, rather than small car buyers simply leaving the brand altogether and increasing the market share for those other brands. Again, ope. Anyways, as mentioned before, the Mark III Focus would see the reconvergence of the European and American Focuses, or Focus I, I don't, I don't know. Under then-CEO Alan Mulally's leadership, Ford came out of the 2008 recession looking towards a one Ford strategy, which would see Ford reinvesting in world cars. By designing a common car for all markets, you wouldn't have drastically different models on both sides of the pond for the same car. Designed in Europe, the Mark III Focus would debut over there for the 2011 model year, and it hit American shores in 2012. While the European model would be built in Saar Louis, Germany, and the American model built in Wayne, Michigan, this focus would also be built in Thailand, China, Taiwan, Argentina, and Russia. And finally, the dreaded chrome new face of Ford of the American second generation would finally get the axe in favor of Ford's new kinetic design. Honestly, I like the kinetic design. The, I don't know, the new face of Ford feels so out of place, especially when you put it up against the new edge of the design language before and the kinetic design you see here, or kinetic design 2.0, which is what this refreshed model is. Most Focus models in the States have the 2.0-liter Duratech 20i4. SD models got the 2.0-liter Chobo. SC models start in 2015 had the option of a 1.0-liter EcoBoost 3-cylinder. And in 2016, America finally got the RS with its impressive 350 horsepower, 350 foot-pounds of torque. Attached to these engines are either a 6-speed manual, a 6-speed auto in the 1.0-liter EcoBoost cars, or the most common transmission in these cars, the infamous six-speed power shift dual-clutch transmission. This is that flaw I mentioned earlier. Boy oh boy, man oh man. While other manufacturers were looking at getting better miles per gallons via CVTs, Ford sought the use of a DCT instead. Now, like a CVT, a DCT provides better fuel economy as there's less mass and motion with the two clutch packs compared to the traditional torque converter. With a power shift, one clutch operates reverse, first, third, and fifth, 
while the other operates second, fourth, and sixth. In theory, this would also allow the power shift to shift smoother than a normal automatic. However, oh, however, the power shift was doomed from the start. Ford opted to use dry clutch packs like you'd see in a manual transmission. Most DCTs use wet clutch packs that are bathed in oil. This allows clutch packs to shift smoother and dissipate heat better over dry clutches. You can see where I'm going here. Immediately, owners started complaining about these transmissions either driving horribly or flat failing. And while I mention drive horribly, I mean like they were shuddering badly. Initially, Ford claimed that it was a faulty throw-up baron or input shaft that was causing the rear main sealed leak on clutch packs. But repaired focuses were still complaining about these issues, often. Ford then tried blaming the transmission control modules, faulty wiring or connecting pins, shifter motors failing, pretty much everything but the design of the transmissions being faulty to begin with. This all culminated in Ford facing a class action lawsuit in 2017, and it would come out that Ford knew of these issues as early as 2010 when testers were even having to pull over on the side of the road because the cars were knocking themselves into neutral. Ford's response? If the customer complains about it shifting rough, then it's just normal operation for this new type of transmission. Yeah. You can kind of imagine how this all kind of blew up in Ford's face. Once again, Ford had egg on its face. They lost the class action lawsuit. 2012 to 2016 Focus owners were awarded either a buyback of their vehicle, a cash payout, or a discount certificate towards a new car. I'll link the website detail in the settlement in that description, as that was actually a very timed, uh, sensitive uh, settlement. But it's interesting just like how deep this whole thing goes. The issue is mostly linked to the fact that the design of the transmission was faulty from the start. While dry clutch packs were cheaper to use than wet ones, they also had a bad tendency to overheat, which would lead to failure or the transmission control module instructing the clutch to disengage to try to prevent further damage. However, Ford continued to re repeatedly refuse to admit this, and in a lot of cases would simply to swap out a transmission for a new one. But with the new transmission having all the same parts and flaws of the old one, so... Yeah, there came a certain point where even dealers were fed up with this. While not as spectacular as Fireball Pintos or the whole Ford Explorer Firestone debacle of the 1990s, this was a huge hit on Ford's reputation post-recession. Ford had been coasting on the merit that they didn't have to declare bankruptcy, and they didn't have to take a government bailout, but here they were making the same corporate decisions that were putting defective products into customer hands. You know, a lot of the same corporate nanny that was a lot of the reasons why America's car manufacturers were in the dumps in the late 2000s to begin with. Alright. Enough rant. This turned into a downer quick. It's unfortunate I have to talk about the power shift, but that's because it's most definitely the elephant in the room concerning the Mark III Focus. It's a shame. Even in its base model S form, the Mark III Focus is a great little car. It's not fast, no, but it's light and tossable in all the right ways on country roads. Really, the biggest issue with the drive boils down to the transmission when it comes to city driving. Taken off from stop signs and stoplights, it acts almost like a CVT as it stumbles from a stop and stumbles in between low gears. An old roommate of mine that had one of these cars said that the harder you drive it, the smoother it drives, which is... In theory, it wouldn't really be an issue if you weren't constantly concerned with the power shift deciding that today was the day it would no longer move. But out on country roads outside of Mooresville? It's where it shines. Out here, it's just a pleasant little car to drive. Inside, it's, yeah, cheap plastics, but come on, this was Ford's second cheapest offering at the time. What do you expect? The tiny screen does feel a tad outdated, even for 2017 standards. And not having a traditional glove compartment or even an armrest was a tad tiring after just a little bit. But other than that, I rather like it inside the Mark III Focus. 
Rear seating is tight, but it's large enough for me at 6 foot 3 inches to sit halfway comfortable, which is something I wouldn't mind on a small trip on like a lunch break outing. I wouldn't say I would get back here for like a road trip, but yeah, a short drive to go get some tacos for lunch? Yeah, I can do it. And then you get stuff like the telescope and wheel, which was something I wasn't really expecting on the entry-level base model. Being an S, though, does come with some concessions, like not having power rear windows, but that's not really something that would bother most people, I feel. Anyways, this particular Mark III Focus comes courtesy of my fiancé, Tori. She's had this car for about a year and a half, and it's been relatively trouble-free in the times she's had the car. The check engine light is currently on at the moment, but honestly, I think it's far overdue for a tune-up. Mainly plugs wires and coils, due to the current age and mileage. When it's cold, it idles a little rough, but then it clears up as it gets up to temperature. It's, again, I don't think it's that big of an issue, and we are getting it addressed in the near future. It's gotten her through paramedic school and has served as a fine replacement for her since her previous car and escape was totaled when it was T-boned at an intersection. But Maggie, as she is affectionately named it, has been a fine car for her. She does want to upgrade into something a little larger in the near future, especially with us having a golden retriever puppy named Tommy Pickles. But the current used car market that's just an absolute dumpster fire at the moment for buyers has us waiting out at the moment. Just waiting for it to simmer down. So, Maggie will continue to be Tories daily for the time being. The third generation Ford Focus was a flawed car. While it was Ford's strongest small car offering since the first gen Focus had debuted 12 years prior in the States, Ford went forward and kneecapped itself with a transmission that ended up being this car's Achilles heel. With the giant class action lawsuit that took around three years to go through, one has to think that that was a driving factor in Ford eventually killing off the Focus in the States to save face. You had a tainted nameplate now. No matter how good the fourth generation may have been, one would connect the dots that Ford simply decided to say F it and put all their chips into crossovers and trucks. Which would have worked wonders if they didn't proceed to flub the launch of the current Explorer and the disaster that was getting Broncos out the door with their tops and various other teething issues with new models like the occasional software hiccups on the Mach-E. Then, you know, many Focus owners not moving on to Ford's small SUV offerings and instead heading towards Hyundai, Kia, Toyota, and Honda products. Yeah. As much as I want to say that this is a good car, go out and buy one, it's just... This power shift transmissions, it's just... <laughs> Ford really really kneecap themselves here it's oh do your research into these before looking them up it just it's a shame because the rest of the car is so good and then just ford just completely flubbed it <laughs> with the transmission hopefully one day i'm able to drive an st or even an rs to see how fun those models are but in just the base form I'd go towards the Japanese or Korean product. 2017 Ford Focus S. A car I can simply describe as one giant O. Thank you once again for watching another episode of Wookie Drives. Huge shout out to my fiance Tori for letting me film her daily for this show. I actually had another car lined up to film after the Outback, but, uh, yeah, that guy kind of flaked on me, so, uh, luckily, uh, we had some time in Tori's busy schedule as a EMT, and we were able to get this car filmed for the show. If you have a car or truck you like to see on the show and happen to be in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, feel free to email me at wookiedrives at gmail.com. Submit your car to wookiedrives at gmail.com. Once again, submit your car to wookiedrives at gmail.com. Check out the official Facebook page at facebook.com slash wookiedrives for channel updates. Follow my Twitter and Instagram at wookieautomotv for rants, raves, and just overall wookie shenanigans. Follow my uh, TikTok at wookieautomotv for just small random videos that don't fit on the large channel as a whole. Finally... Don't forget to give the video a like, drop a comment with some feedback, any sort of interaction helps this channel grow. 
share with all your Ford Focus friends. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for more Wookie drives like these. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. The Lion Man's life, deprived of human contact for decades, would change completely with the new 2008 Ford Focus. We found him a week later. In that time, Lion Man had gone from animal to social animal. The sporty handling and the Microsoft Sync system accelerated his socializing process. He had completely changed. Well, almost. The new redesigned 2008 Ford Focus is a real social life accelerator.